heads of the departments, Professor Zafar Saab, the nodal person of the uh, program, research scholars, students, ladies and gentlemen. It's my uh, profound pleasure to uh, welcome you all uh, in this important program on the Himalayan uh, establishment of the Youth Forum in JNK chapter of the Himalayan Knowledge Network sponsored by the NMHS. I thank you at the outset profusely for sparing your time to attend this inaugural function. I am personally grateful to Honorable Vice Chancellor and Irshad Sahab, Professor Dr. Nisar Sahab for sparing valuable time. I understand that they are very busy with other activities as well. Uh, your presence gives us encouragement, your presence makes us say pursue the goals of sustainable development more vigorously. Uh, it is <clears throat> something which we always expect from the university authorities to encourage people who are say doing something good. Right, and then there are a very few youngsters also participating in this function. That's that, that makes basically it very important for the who is who of the university to participate in this function. Uh, <coughs> uh, respected madam, I must also take this opportunity to thank uh, GB Pan National Institute of Himalayan Environment. Uh, they have been particularly kind to this university. Uh, we have had a grant of say around three crores from them for various fellowships. We have had, I mean, many of us have large grants from uh, GB Pant Institute, which looks after the NMHS National Mission on Himalayan Studies. Many of us have projects, and then, incidentally, many of us have collaborative projects as well. Uh, we, are, and then, <clears throat> as a continuation to that, uh, and our say understanding with them, they approached the University of Kashmir for establishing this uh, this chapter, Jammu and Kashmir chapter, under this Himalayan Knowledge Network. Now, the, the genesis of this Himalayan Knowledge Network is that there was a meeting in which Niti Aayog members also participated. They were of this opinion that Himalaya, the Indian Himalayan region is, I mean Himalaya as such is called as third pole, lot of water resides there, it helps the population downstream. Then it is a biodiversity hot spot as well. And then keeping in view the importance of the Himalaya and then the issues that Himalaya faces, the Niti Aayog thought that we have to have the youth, we have to have the universities, we have to have the institutions in the Himalayan cities involved in the decision making process, right? And they said that this decision making, proper decision making process can, uh, decision making can take place only when we have very valuable data coming from institutions, coming from in, uh, universities, coming from individuals. And in that policy planning, the youth has a very significant role to play. I mean, they are saying that the youth has to actually, and in Uttarakhand, the, the migration is a very serious concern. You don't have such an issue here in Kashmir, but in Uttarakhand you have. Now, that means there are issues, say, faced by the youth in the Indian Himalayan region. Through this, say, Himalayan Knowledge Network, they want to address these issues, and they want to make these, the youth as the partners, say, in the, in the, in the sustainable development programs and policy. We are helped by a very large number of people from different institutions, including ours. Uh, to document the current status of this diversity, what are the threats faced by this biodiversity and what can be done to sustainably utilize in the economic development of the <coughs> Union territory, right? Now, I take this opportunity, I mean, I deliberately chose to have this, this meeting, Youth Forum meeting, uh, organize it in association with DSW, otherwise we could have gone into the project mode type of a thing, we could have done it ourselves. But I deliberately chose, the reason being that the project may end at some time. But we do not want to actually end the involvement of the youth in the, the affairs of the, the, the environmental affairs of the state. We need to sensitize them. My opinion over a period of time has been that we have not basically, say, involved our youth in decision-making process. And it is high time we listen to them. It is a day to live a different world. We are a very old lot. They are, say, the, the, the perceptions about environment are different, their needs are different, right? Their choices are also different. And naturally, we need to actually listen to them and then frame policies which are which address their choices, which address their issues, which address their concerns, not our concerns. At times, we trust basically policies on them. And we think in, in a period which is 50 years backwards, right? Now, our aim is <coughs> that youth is, at a global level, youth is playing a very active role. And I do not know the reasons why our youth are not basically playing that role which the people globally are playing, particularly in the context of environmental issues, right? 
uh, all of the all, all the learned people who are attending this function must be knowing that there is a global agenda right and then this global agenda holds true for us also there are sustainable development goals there are 17 sustainable development goals right on which each country has to actually show progress right in accordance with the mandates and the niti ayog also comes up each year with the sustainable development report of india we could at the university have a sustainable development report of jnt also done i mean it can be done we can do it and then these are the 17 sustainable development goals and these are the goals which every human being in every country wants to achieve and then issue is that we will deliberate upon this that as to how we will be participating in a meaningful way in the process of achieving realizing the goals and in sustainable development goals and then incidentally in the sustainable development the realization of these sustainable development the youth are playing a very major role regarding our uh, issues in the himalayas as we all know that india as well as the kashmir is blessed by again by the himalayan range ultimately what matters in the intervention and negative or positive intervention in the himalayan range of the forests that matters a lot and 33% uh, population being the ethnic groups it also matters a lot because 33% population is a huge to destroy or maintain any ecological system so we need to uh, we need to make aware the population which is inhabiting the himalayan range also when we say that uh, the youth because this uh, event which is which is more concentrated which is more uh, Tested on the youth of JNK and particularly the University of Kashmir. When we see that, uh, particularly the water issues, what is being told now that the next world war will be fought on the water probably. Uh, I'm a, I, I'm a, I am basically from a village. When I used to some ten years back, we were involved in the in the for, in the farming of paddy. So some decade back I saw in my village that most of the people have turned their paddy fields into the horticulture, horticulture business. I thought that probably horticulture may be bit much, uh, it may be a cash crop type. But I was surprised to know that the villagers and the farmers told me that it is because, not because more of a being the productive or more being a cash crop, but it is more because of the we don't have those gushing water streams in the villages now, which used it to be in our childhood. That is a great concern of all of us, that the water resources are depleting and probably what is being predicted that the next world war may be on water. Same is true because uh, Kashmir is known for its beauty and also about the glaciers and other water resources, so we need to Preserve it and to, we need to make our youth aware about such things. I myself know that youth, uh, particularly the productive age group of 16-45, matters a lot in the sustainable, what uh, we call is development or the sustainable development of any nation. And so is true with our own valley of JNK. I hope the DSW will inshallah provide full support to the uh, concerned departments, whether it is sociology, whether it is earth sciences, whether it is botany, zoology or any other department, we will provide full support uh, and we will uh, try to uh, consult all the students, stakeholders in the Kashmir University as well and we will provide full support on our account. As far as uh, this youth forum establishment is concerned, as you all know, uh, majority of the people have a concept that this is a period in life between childhood and adulthood. And that is the age when everybody, in a, that is a growing duration of a particular person, uh, ideas float in, in his mind. And each idea in turn opens up newer and newer fields. However, the burden of actually handling those ideas, sharing the themes or sharing his or her knowledge with others is the backbone of success. In majority of the cases, we may listen to the suggestions, we may read the suggestions, we may discuss the suggestions, but don't decide as to what we can do. And in such forms, obviously, we have to play a role wherein we can not only listen to youngsters, not only listen to kids, but in turn give them an option to implement what they have in mind. 
as in every areas nowadays we try to educate youngsters try to give them certain ideas wherein they can play a why important role in not only upliftment but also maintaining whatever we are dependent upon i'll give you just two or three uh, ideas that we have seen being implemented in different states because as a member of the team we visit different projects sponsors as well as different institutions where such projects are being run they have tried to collaborate and cooperate with tribal communities and the youngsters and luckily me and my younger colleague uh, anzar had a project for five long years which is on a similar theme as to how we can actually utilize the traditional knowledge of using the resources properly so that we can in turn survive for a longer duration and that project in turn bore wonderful results in terms of highlighting the role of the tribal communities as well as the younger generation of those tribal communities in sharing that knowledge and in that interaction one can in turn not only listen to the kids especially who have a theme to float in but also try to see what could be the outcome of using his concept or his knowledge in terms of trying to maintain sustain and utilize properly the diversity on which we are directly dependent we may have had many projects we may have had many sponsoring agencies trying to provide us financial and other say, help but what the net outcome of those projects is are we able to achieve the goals properly as was rightly pointed out by zafar saab if we try to interact with kids and give them an option to speak and once they speak try to give them a position to try to implement that scheme which can bear a fruit ordinarily we listen to everybody we listen to all the presenters who make uh, say wonderful presentations of different themes there but in the long run are we trying to take some outcome of that presentation to implement so that what we are dependent on whatever theme is can be in turn uh, useful to sustenance of biodiversity on which we are directly dependent upon you might have heard many people like sundarlal bauguna gayatri devi or shekul alam who have given us the concept of dependence on biodiversity when the extinction was not a concept losing information was not a concept but at that time they tried to educate us what we can do in my opinion such workshops such get togethers can actually open a new and new avenues wherein we can not only try to educate youngsters but give them an option as to how they can be part of a system not necessarily he should have a masters degree in botany by chemistry by technology no it can be youngster of a school group or a college group who can play a role and that role can in turn help us to see what the scenario will be like after a gap of say 5 years or 10 years what we are seeing what we are watching at present to today's uh, program establishing youth forum in uh, jnk uh, under the <coughs> chapter of hk and himalayan knowledge network uh, Uh, i would uh, like to <coughs> tell you that the himalayan region as all of you know and for the information of our uh, young colleagues the participants here it is spread over entire northern boundary of india and touches the international boundaries of uh, seven countries that is afghanistan pakistan china nepal bhutan bangladesh and myanmar Uh, as <coughs> it has been already circulated that this region supports 30% of the total uh, ethnic group 44% of the total biodiversity 63% of the total water flow budget and 100% of the alpine and glacial system of the country all of you know that most of the glaciers they are located in the alpines and <coughs> most of our rivers like the sindh river it is fed throughout the year by the water flowing from the glaciers so <coughs> these are the resources which we have here in kashmir himalayas now <coughs> uh, despite being ecologically rich and uh, providing innumerable goods and services uh, to the local populations the region is at the same time vulnerable to environmental problems like climate change now among the 13 uh, Indian states and union territories of the Indian Himalayan region Jammu and Kashmir is also one of the stakeholders which has the responsibility to play its part in Himalayan network uh, knowledge network 
Coming to today's function of establishing a youth forum in j k is a first step in this direction. Uh, through this forum, uh, the students would share uh, their knowledge of the rich biodiversity of this region, uh, the goods and services provided by the Kashmir Himalayan region, and above all, the conservation of the endangered species. Uh, dear students, you must be knowing about hangul, which is an endangered species and it is our responsibility to save this species from extinction. Similarly, there are the various water bodies like uh, Dal Lake on the banks of which the function is being organized is also not in a good shape. And it is the responsibility uh, uh, of ours to restore uh, uh, this water body to its glorious past. I congratulate the organizers of this uh, particular program uh, because uh, I always feel that any program, any activity, whether it's academic or research, is incomplete unless we involve our students and uh, we involve our youth. I think uh, it's a well thought of uh, plan. Uh, by the committee which must have worked on this uh, Himalayan knowledge network at national level and state level uh, to involve our uh, youth forum in different activities. And uh, as I could see, you know, uh, for today's particular program, I think initially you have started with the debate and painting competition, both very important uh, you know themes that have been chosen uh, i'm sure by debate and uh, of course by the this painting uh, exercise uh, one really sees the heart and mind of our young youth because it's not in writing that they put up it's the ideas which they put up uh, maybe in painting and we should definitely encash that particular idea could be in a project form could be uh, for a minor uh, you know theme or something like that because i have seen uh, you know uh, maximum time the students we, when they paint something it's a very elaborative thing it's not that particular painting but uh, lots of parameters are connected to it so i'm sure that will be benefited it by it uh, and again, I am very sure that many uh, students from different departments must, must be participating in this particular uh, competition and other institutions. That's uh, really good. I feel uh, that the, this type of activity should move forward as many of uh, speakers, uh, Professor Manzoor also said, that uh, this activity should not remain only uh, in our own campus, it should reach to the community. As I see the uh, wider uh, mandate of this particular Himalayan Knowledge Network, it's how you involve, how you know the mandate is involving women, mandate is involving uh, you know mountain communities, uh, mandate is of course involving uh, youth policy makers i mean it's a huge type of activity where there's immense type of work that we can do i'm sure that after this uh, as uh, you know uh, we, uh, professor zafar only said uh, you know uh, there should be some type of workshop some type of you know seminar in future to take this activity of course i feel uh, that workshop having different themes could really help and uh, it will be really wonderful and if you know anything uh, is uh, put forth for for our own campus also any idea is put forth for us will be uh, you know really uh, happy to implement it uh, as uh, our director dika said uh, there's a mandate from uh, you know nac uh, you know how uh, we have to uh, set the parameters of a green campus. I would definitely like let the ideas come from our youth also so that we really implement it. And uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that from this uh, particular fro forum, from this particular activity, there will be many, uh, you know, takings that will go for the 
policy uh, implications maybe not in a wider perspective right now because it's a, a painting and uh, elocution competition but definitely as i said some of the themes can be identified and you can work in a very extensive manner uh, in future uh, i really uh, congratulate department of uh, uh, students welfare also for collaborating this activity uh, with uh, the uh, himalayan knowledge network uh, and i'm sure that in future also uh, such type of activities uh, will be carried as professor uh, zafar gave an idea of uh, example of greta thunberg uh, definitely you know i don't think so uh, we have uh, less yes. uh, you know uh, personalities yes. in our own youth but only is you have to work hard you have to be dedicated you have to be visible so it really makes difference when you make yourself visible and you work hard dedicately i'm sure that uh, you know we can identify uh, so many in our own institute and in this particular forum uh, with these words uh, you know i congratulate once more to organizers of this particular uh, activity and uh, all the best to the youth who are present here the earth is covered by 70% of water and yet less than 3% remains drinkable but the math tells us only 0.6% of this is directly available to us. Water conservation is never a choice, it's a necessity. Unless and until human behavior towards water conservation changes, it will not be an overstatement to say that water is extinct. The consequences brought by water wastage will undoubtedly be intolerable. Climate change unmanaged industrialization, urbanization have massively reduced the quality of water. We are considered to be the most intelligent civilization on earth, and yet we are on the verge of failing this planet of its most valuable resource. The fragmentation of this resource also constrains water security. 148 countries share 276 transboundary basins, which account for 60% of the global freshwater flows. What sustains life on this planet? What makes life even possible on Earth? A very common answer would be air, water, oxygen, the right temperature. Some might even add extra time and start to the list, but coming on the actual necessity, water. We have abundant water, don't we? 71% of the Earth is covered with water. But is that all consumable? No. From that 71%, only 97% is, 97% is the ocean water that is not consumable. Only 3% and from that 3%, 1.2% is drinking water. So take it as 1.2% and thirst of 8 billion people. Does it seem like a fair ratio? So now the question is, are we treating water the way it should be treated? Are we actually considering its worth? Because if that would have been the case, there wouldn't be global water crisis. We all know COVID, right? The nightmare. Why is it such a nightmare? Because of the death and sufferings it caused. But giving COVID aside, Thousands and thousands of people are dying every day anyway. According to UNICEF, 2,000 children die globally every day due to drinking contaminated water. And who is responsible for this? Birds? Fishes? It is we. Our activities in the name of development, combustion, mining, burning of fuels, industrialization. We have deteriorated water so much that currently 1.1 billion people lack access to it. According to statistics, 80% of the industrial waste that is so toxic is dumped in the water. Around 10 billion pounds of garbage annually is thrown in the oceans, containing plastic. Water has become such a convenient dustbin. Water, as we all know, is the soul of life. Water, is the taste of water is life. We all know how water is useful to us, how it sustains life and everything about water. Water is used, this, we have been listening to this from our childhood that water is used for drinking, water is used for cleaning, cooking, water is necessary for everything. Now, since childhood we have been taught how to think, then what to think. Water resources are the resources of water, form in, uh, present in any form on planet that are useful to human. Now, after that, when yesterday I was thinking about what should I say in my speech, 
I went to one of her helpers in the house and I asked her, what do you think about the current status of water? To this, she replied, water is the only thing I have available in abundance. I have unlimited access to water. All the other things in my life are limited. Love, everything is limited. Only water I have that in unlimited. Access, I have unlimited access to water. You know, every single time I go out with my parents on a family picnic, some of the words between my elders are very common. I'll uh, quote them. They're like, Aab chun van tiyut ke. Saani vakt saat aabas maz aasa gaad. Van chat khabar tum kod gai. Ya aab chun zan kritiyomut. What is this kritiyomut is? It is like shrunk. Like it's not in abundance as much as it was at their time. But it is their view. I'll tell you my view. I have always seen water like that. I have always seen water a place where you can dump your apples because that is what I see people around me doing. So I have grown with the mindset of that, isn't it? Haven't we all? But the fact is, every single time, nature has always stood behind us. But what on the real ground, other than talking hair on the dice, have we done about it? Nothing. Which is very bad to say, actually. <laughs> now, if we talk about just India specifically, uh, India has around 4% of the uh, fresh water abundance, right, of the world. But you know what? It has 18% of the world's population to serve. So I would say uh, not a good match. And people actually need to use water sustainably. And we all know that. But do we do it? No, we don't do it. Because being a human being, being, uh, being it a trait of ourselves, of being selfish, we do not give it a shot. We do not give it another thought, which is wrong. I am reminded of the 2014 floods. I remember it was 3.30 a.m. in the morning, and I was probably in my 10th round of sleep by then. My mother came, and she shot my shoulder to wake me up, just for me to witness that there is water gushing inside our home. And in the next half an hour, we were all already down with one and a half floors of water, anxiety and fear. When I am re reminded of the access of water, I am reminded of the water wives of Maharashtra. Wives, multiple wives in fact, who marry a single man just for them to fetch the water for the husband. Wives who have no legal rights, but they walk tens of kilometers in the scorching heat of 40, 50 degrees Celsius just to fetch water for the husband and to gain social acceptance. So yes, when I think of water resources, I believe that water can either be your best friend or your worst enemy. Well, uh, so for this event is concerned, this is about the establishment of the uh, youth forum uh, in the Himalayan uh, Knowledge Network under the aegis of uh, NMHS, National Mission for Himalayan Studies. Uh, under this uh, HKN, the Himalayan Knowledge Network, the plan is to actually uh, develop a kind of uh, framework that could guide the policy for better conservation of biodiversity and management of our water resources, uh, especially in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, because it's a specific chapter for Jammu and Kashmir. And so far, this biodiversity conservation or uh, water resource management is concerned, the role of youth is central to it. Until and unless we do not engage with the youth, uh, uh, it will not make any uh, difference uh, on the ground. So the idea of establishing this youth forum so far is concerned is to uh, get youth on board and provide them uh, a platform to use their creative potential, their talent to uh, describe their uh, sort of ideas through, the, through their art, through their debating skills, through their thinking out of box uh, approach and basically get these ideas uh, into the policy framework as to how youth actually see this uh, issue of biodiversity and water uh, resource depletion in future. Because, you know, our days are almost gone and it is these youth who live in the world of tomorrow until unless their perspectives are not uh, put into this policy framework, it will be an incomplete story. Uh, we are trying to engage with uh, them through a cross-disciplinary approach in, in getting people from sociology, from languages, from social work, uh, so that we can come up with a common man's summary 
of these very important uh, research uh, works that have been done uh, in the university so far that helps us to better connect with nature, better connect with society and the role, role of youth is very central to it I believe this youth forum will go a long way so far uh, achieving this uh, very important goal is concerned.